I'm Zach Elmblad. And I'm Kevin Sharon. Here, somewhere, in Kalamazoo. God. <laughs> Today, Kevin and I are kayaking on the Kalamazoo River. We've done several sections of the river, but this is our current favorite. Running from a private access site off of D Avenue, north of the city, to downtown Plainwell, the stretch takes about two to three hours at a leisurely pace and passes over a removed dam that provides an opportunity to get a little whitewater action. It's very easy to get out and portage back up river in order to run the dam again and again. We've lost hats, shoes, camera batteries, and our self-respect on that dam. It's fun to swim and provides us with hours of entertainment. When we tell stories about kayaking on and swimming in the Kalamazoo River, most people begin to start telling jokes about growing extra limbs or becoming some type of radioactive beast. This is due to the history of the river and Kalamazoo itself. Many years before any of us were born, the Kalamazoo River was an unbridled drainage system for the spring snowmelt and summer rains of southwest Michigan. It was a source of food for indigenous tribes, as well as a source of transportation west to Lake Michigan. Throughout the 19th century, agriculture and fur trapping became big business in the area as Michigan achieved statehood. The Kalamazoo River would have been just as important as any other river in the nation as a source of food, transportation, and irrigation. In the beginning of the 20th century and into the post-war era, the Kalamazoo area became known for the manufacture of paper products and pharmaceuticals, which commonly followed the indigenous people's use of the river as a place to discard waste. Although the impact of human waste in the river was negligible for hundreds of years, the local ecology was not able to handle the dumping of toxic wastes such as DDT and PCBs. The pattern of pollution has continued into the 21st century with the Enbridge oil spill just a few years ago. In 1990, the Kalamazoo River was placed on the priority list of the National Superfund. In my opinion, the community of Kalamazoo and national interests in the area have made valiant efforts to clean up the problems of the last 200 years. In some of the sections of the river we've traveled, there are very few signs that industry ever even existed. In other parts, however, there are still many testaments to the industrial history of the area. Where many see ruin and turn away, Kevin and I see the possibility to enjoy what is left and to monitor the progress of the last four years of cleanup, conservation, and development. The people that don't enjoy this source of natural beauty and recreation are truly missing out. Those who give up too early always regret it, and those who press on are always rewarded. We haven't passed any other boaters on the river today, which is a shame considering how nice it is outside. However nice the isolation may be, we'd like to see other people enjoying the river as much as we are. Even though there weren't many people, there were a lot of animals sharing the river with us today. As we drifted, we came across groups of turtles warming themselves on the fallen trees along the banks. A blue heron led us through the forest stretches, and the chirps and chatters of various other creatures broke the silence as we paddled along. Things get scary 
Give it up while you still can There's plenty of time to become a man Keep running from your problems Kill tomorrow for yesterday again